we will be providing you with pertinent information as to how you can get your distinction. story based on visual stimulus two to state the approach that should be taken when writing a story based on a visual stimulus three examine several pictures and discuss what comes to mind in reference to these pictures four to choose one of the given pictures and write a story Five, to share strategies for writing effective story. And six, to provide a medium where students or learners can write their own stories. And of course, provide instant feedback on these stories. So once you have written these stories, I will be providing you with feedback on them. All right, good. And also, once you have discovered the strategies for writing effective stories, oh my God, story writing is going to be like a breeze for you. Stay tuned. In writing stories based on a visual stimulus is like having your favorite fruit. Mm. Delicious. stimulus have you ever written a story based on a visual stimulus for csec english in preparation for csec english or have you taken the uh, csec english before and have you written a story based on a visual stimulus let me know in the comment section below all right let's visual stimulus for csec english in preparation for csec english or have you taken the uh, csec english before and have you written a story based on a visual stimulus let me know in the comment section below all right agiglobal.com a stimulus is normally anything in the form of a picture or color shown on screen which usually is used to evoke a VEP, and by VEP we mean visually evoked potential. When you look at a picture, have you ever thought about it? When one examines a picture, he or she may feel a particular way depending on the images or details in the pictures. Let's examine closely picture one. How does it make you feel? Let's look at picture two. How does it make you feel? Share in the comment section below. picture may cause us to feel petrified, worried, upset, or even sympathetic. And it is that in 
emotion or feeling that is aroused within us that will cause us to determine the type of story we write. In the second photograph or picture, we will see that the child looks somewhat frightened and this her appearance here or his appearance here will cause us as viewers to feel also frightened, worried, scared, or even nervous. And it is that emotion which when arose within us that will cause us to determine the type of story we write. Did you get that? Okay. Tell me if you did. on visual stimulus? Well, first, you have to examine carefully the picture, noting the following details. One, the character or character's facial appearance. Two, the character or character's attire. Three, the character or character's posture. Two, note carefully the location. Where is the character? Is he at a hotel? Is he in a cab? Is he actually in a truck? Where is the character? Okay, note all of those things. Note all the minute details such as signs, posters, banners, and others. Think, what are you going to think about? Who is the character? Why does he or she look a particular way? What is happening or what has happened to him or her? Why did it happen to him or her? What is going to be the end result? How will the conflict be resolved? So you notice the who, the what, the where, the where, the why, and the how. Those are the questions that needs to be answered in your story. The who, who is a character or characters. Okay, the why. Why has this happened to the character? Based on the conflict that you're going to happen, that will determine why it has happened to the character. What is happening to the character? Okay, good. Why has this happened to the character? What is the end result or how will this conflict be resolved? So remember that characters play an essential role in your stories. And so hence they should be given an identity, a name, right? So give your characters a name, an identity. You'd also need to give your characters a role, a function that they are going to be performing in the story, okay? Whether they're going to be the main character, major character, or minor character. Now, let's look at how we can name our characters. Notice the photograph at to the left, okay? Okay, right, you see that and there's an example of how to name your character. Now, Mr. Alexander Carmichael, Executive Brand Manager of Exquisite Distribution and Production Limited, or rather, former brand manager, could not believe his present misfortune. Are you curious as to find out, to find out what has happened to Mr. Alexander Carmichael? I am. Are you? actually write our story is what is the main conflict or problem right now conflict plays a crucial role in your story without conflict the story is banal boring right bandit mundane right good so hence it is important that you establish your main conflict from very early on into your story decide on whether or not your conflict is going to be an internal conflict or an external conflict now internal conflicts are problems with self right good while external conflict are problems outside of self so man versus man man versus nature man versus society those are all external conflict now let us see how, how we can actually use the photograph and continue with this story so as he sat on the back, as he sat, sorry, in the back of the truck, 
With his hands folded across his legs, he contemplated his next move. A million questions plagued his mind. How could he have been so gullible? Why did he not see the loopholes in the contract? What had possessed him to sign? Are we still curious to find the third question? The question that you have to contemplate is what are the complications? Now, complications are the other problems that occur as a result of the main conflict. No. Complications are also essential in your stories, and it, therefore, you sh these complications should be planned, right? So you have to think about your complications that you're going to have in your story before you actually write your stories. Okay, right? Remember, as that you need to remember that all events in your stories are, of course, related or should be related. And your complication should be in keeping with your main conflict, okay? Right? So if we were to an analyze the, the story that we have written so far, what we have so far, what are some of the complications that we could uh, think about in, in re with regards to Mr. Carmichael. Well, one of the complications could have been the freezing of his assets. Okay, good. He has lost his job, which you know is the main conflict, okay, right, or problem that needs to be resolved. He has lost his job due to a business deal that went sour or bad, right? And then another complication could have been also threatening for imprisonment, right? Good. Maybe he had um, fraudulent transaction and this could have caused imprisonment and all. Another complication could have been also the loss of reputation, okay? Given the fact that he is an executive brand manager, right? It could have, you know, so that is also in keeping with the storyline that we're working with, okay? Understanding so far? Let me know. Climax is the most interesting part of the story. This is where the readers have an idea as to how the main conflict or problem will be resolved. Note, resolved, not solved. Now, some of the climatic events for this storyline could have been Mr. Carmichael is traced chased by the police. Mr. Carmichael is arrested. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carmichael has broken into the home of the person who has framed him. All right. Are you seeing the story coming together now? Are you seeing it? Seeing it? Seeing it? Seeing it? Let me know. is where the main conflict is resolved or not solved. The resolution is basically the end of the story. Stories may have a happy ending. They may also have um, a tragic ending. Or tra so stories may end in a Cinderella happily, happily ever after manner or it may have a tragic ending okay depending again on your storyline so your storyline will determine the type of resolution that you're going to have for your story okay so you need to think about those five questions before you actually write your story who are your characters what is the conflict all right isn't that so right what uh, what are the complications what are what is going to be your climatic event in the story and how is the main problem going to be resolved not solved but resolved combination of the elements, the various elements, right? Now, setting, right? Setting has to do with the place and time of the story. Conflict theme, so stories must be set, have a central theme or issue that is being addressed. Figurative, figur figurative devices or figures of speech, title, 
story should have a title and of course i would recommend that you write the title after you write the title after you have written your story and i say this to my students every year because sometimes you have the title and then you write a story and the, t the story is not in keeping with your title so it's best to write your story first and then of course you leave a space for the title and then you pull this the title from your story right so that's a tip that you can use all right and of course the characters it's important to have what is known as contrasting characters in your stories so contrasting characters will of course make your story interesting so character differ or be differ in terms of their personality in terms of their physical appearance in terms of their religion in terms of their language in terms of their sex or gender um, um, you know and the list goes on right in terms of their values their beliefs their even their speech right characters differ and of course it is interest um stories become more interesting when you have these contrasting characters okay of course stories have a moral right however and that by that we mean the lesson to be learned from the story and of course we know and you know that you're not supposed to say the moral of the story is okay allow your readers to draw their own conclusion as to what the moral is of course but of course you know that you might hint at the moral so what right so the moral might be there the lesson might be there that they need to learn of course dialogue right and dialogue is important because dialogue breaks the narrative voice right and allow the readers or invite the readers in so that they can form their own conclusion as to who these characters are um, based on what they do and say okay plot yes so the plot is a series of events in the story and all um, all stories have what is known as four bare bones so you have the beginning the complication the climax and the resolution so at the beginning you are introduced to the character the main character and is or her problem and then you have the complications right which we, we discussed earlier these are all the other problems that, that that arise as a result of the main problem, of course. And then you have the climax and then you have the resolution for the plot. And of course, suspense. Suspense is, is important. You don't say everything, but you write in a rather suspenseful manner, right? You withhold information to create interest and build the momentum. So you notice that we, we have not discovered as yet why Mr. Carmichael uh, has lost his job right we have not discovered that as yet so we are in we, we are curious to find out what happened to him what did he do right what was the, what were the loopholes in this contract right so suspense the withholding of information suspense is created when you withhold uh, information then of course adjectives and adverbs so you're going to use your adjectives and your adverbs in order to enhance your story some stories have what is known as a twist right but you have to be very careful because the twist must be in keeping with your storyline and it should be plausible punctuation marks right yes that's an elementary feature punctuation marks because you know the punctuation marks can help you with your story so you have the flashback and the flash forward and all of those things and you can use it the ellipsis which is a three dots in order to suggest to the reader so the reader has an idea that you're going to use a flashback technique or you have used a flashback flash forward technique and then you have the narrative point of view and that means the perspective from which the story should be written whether it's going to be written from the first person or or the third person but you cannot be writing from both perspectives so in your stories you can't have first person and third person so you have to choose the perspective and sometimes cxc dictates the perspective that from which the story is to be written okay good but if you are using a visual visual if you're writing a story based on the visual now the visual stimulus then you will determine whether you want to write the story from the first person perspective or the third person perspective the first person perspective the narrator is a character in the story in the third person perspective the narrator is not a character in the story its narrator is viewed as an omniscient narrator just that this this this, this information has been somewhat beneficial to you
earlier referred to the time and place where a scene occurs. Now, setting can help to set the mood, influence the way characters behave, affect the dialogue, foreshadow events, invoke an emotional response, reflect the society in which the characters live, and sometimes even play a, a part in the story. Now, setting, you have to be very careful with setting. Now, setting should only be emphasized or highlighted if it plays a significant role in the development of the plot or the story. Setting should not be emphasized just merely because you want to put in setting. Okay, right? So, setting is important, but also remember that settings can be alluded to instead of being emphasized or highlighted. Let's check in on our story to see if we have the right blend or mixture of elements. So let's go. Mr. Alexander Carmichael, Executive Brand Manager of Exquisite Distribution and Production Limited, or rather former brand manager, could not believe his present misfortune. As he sat in the back of the pickup truck with his hands folded across his legs, he contemplated his next move. A million questions plagued his mind. How could he have been so gullible? Why did he not see the loopholes in the contract? What had possessed him to sign? He closed his eyes, trying to block out the events of the morning, but to no avail. The words, you are fired, not only gripped his heart, causing him to feel as if he was having, an, having a heart attack, but it seemed also to have taken a permanent resident into his cranium. He closed his eyes again, and he remembered the day it all started. Having listened to the story, I trust that you were able to see the following elements or identify the following elements. Suspense is there. Adjectives, the use of adjectives and adverbs are there. Rhetorical question, figurative device, rhetorical question, right? Question that doesn't need to be answered, you know the answer to it. Punctuation marks are used the, um, in this, of course. And of course, you have the third person narrative perspective. Are you able to complete this story, right? Are you able to complete this story? If you are, go ahead and try and complete it, right? Now, I will be putting a link to the story in the description box for you so you can go ahead and check it out read the story in its entirety and i'll also be providing you with an opportunity to write your own story and of course if you you uh, once you've written your story and submit i will be vetting it and providing you with feedback on it in preparation for your csec examination trust that this information has been beneficial to you all the best in your exam all right Okay, let's proceed. You will be writing your story. Remember, you can do all things through Christ. All right? You know that we are, we are, uh, <laughs> we're basically wrapping up now. Okay, you're going to choose one of the following pictures and, and you are going to write a story based on CXC guideline in 400 to 450 words on one of the given picture. Remember what we say about using the prompt to guide you the picture, the visual stimulus to guide you, examine it closely, ensure that your story is in keeping with the picture that has been presented or given to you. I know that you are capable of doing it, so remember to attempt. If at first you don't succeed, try, 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 try again. Allow your teachers to read your stories, vet your stories, give you feedback on your stories, consult with your parents and your friends and your family, and of course, let them provide you with the necessary feedback so that you can pass and get your distinction. Okay, it's in your reach, it is within your grasp. You can do it. Okay, also remember to check out the, the 
the, the link um, in the description box below where you will get um, the, the story of Mr. Ken Michael Carmichael in its entirety. So remember to check out that as well and read it. And, and as you read, identify the elements that were employed. And this will give you an idea as to how you can infuse these elements in your stories as well. All the best to you. God bless.